Hello and welcome to the official non-esports YouTube channel. I am Kadoink and today spawning in the bottom left of Cloud uh, it's Cloud Kingdom, my goodness, of Entombed Valley. Don't know why I had Cloud Kingdom on my mind. We have our non-esports player Forsaken XE spawning as the Red Terran. And his opponent in the top left of Entombed Valley is the Blue Terran player Clone Blan. Clone B-Lan, Clone Blan, something like that, something like this. Um, this game is of course going up on Friday because I will be flying home to Nashville over the weekend and will not be able to cast and upload a game for Saturday. So you get your weekly dose of non-esports goodness a day early. And that's very, very exciting. And I decided, I was looking through the non-games and I saw that this was a TVT and I feel like I haven't casted a TVT in a very, very long time. So I thought, wow, I really want to do a mirror matchup that's not Zerg vs. Zerg or Protoss vs. Protoss. So pick this game very excited to cast it for you guys and I hope you guys enjoy it uh, in other news we did very very well in our last clan match and I would like to cast some of those games for next week I was gonna do them this week but it turns out I've been very very busy working on programming projects for school which sounds like a whole heap of fun believe me uh, it's more difficult <laughs> but yeah, I'm going to try to get some of those games done next week as we did very, very well and like to show everyone the games we've played. So it looks like both Forsaken and Clone Blaine are kind of doing the usual thing. The big difference, of course, being that uh, Forsaken did get his gas while Clone Blaine did not. So Clone Blaine probably going to be getting up a little bit of an earlier expansion while Forsaken might be going for a bit of early pressure in the beginning. We might see... Uh, a Banshee play or something like that. Actually, no, he's going to be getting a tech lab on his barracks. So maybe a uh, Marauder push or more likely Reapers. Something we kind of see on and off. It's not exactly the most popular. I really don't like the Reaper opening personally. I feel like it's actually pretty weak. And yeah, it's going to be a Reaper. Um, I feel like it was really, really good in the beta because Reapers were a little bit overpowered. And I honestly do think that Blizzard over nerfed the Reaper pretty hard. I I think that I of course feel like StarCraft is pretty well balanced, but I do think there are some issues with uh, units kind of not being viable, and I think the Reaper is a good example of one. Uh, we've dealt with so much early aggression in the beginning of StarCraft history, uh, so many one base plays that the community's gotten really good at just defending things, defending cheese, uh, and this is exactly what I'm talking about. He saw the tech lab, he knows exactly what's going on as the Reaper, and he's going to be patrolling these Marines around, and once this once this Reaper hops up there, it's going to die pretty much instantly. Um, as we can see, the Reaper coming up at this time, and, oh, it's going to survive with, like, one, two hit points, but, I mean, it's not worth it. Even with the combat drugs that's coming in Heart of the Swarm, it'll get full health, and then once again it'll hop up and take damage from these... Uh, from these marines, so I feel like Reaper needs a little bit of something, I don't know, something more interesting to make it viable. It's just too squishy. There's so many more one base aggression builds that are much stronger and much more powerful that something as squishy as a Reaper is going to be easily dealt with by high level players, uh, which, you know, Forsaken is a Master League player, so he's going to be playing Master League players, and Clone Bland is, is going to be able to deal with this just fine, so. We do have two Reapers as well as an SCV. He might be trying to do some sort of little bunker Reaper play. Um, but I just don't think it's going to be effective, so I, I much prefer the choice of Forsaken switching into taking an expansion. He's getting up his second gas as well as some more barracks um, and an engineering base. So he's going to be getting upgrades, probably going for a Marine Heavy play. He's getting that combat shield. And then he's probably going to be transitioning into Marine Tank, something like that. Well, Clone Blade's actually taking a very, very quick third command center, so a little bit more economical. Uh, and here we go, we have the little Reaper engagement coming up with the SCV. There are a good bit of Marines, I think Forsaken sees that. We'll have to see how it does. Reapers, of course, killing Marines very, very quickly, and this being kind of the uh, the, actual, the actual good thing of Reapers. But we can see here that two of the Reapers died very quickly. A third will go down. He did kill uh, a few SCVs. In fact, in total, we have four SCVs killed. But four SCVs... At what cost? I mean, he's only he's only about 75 minerals ahead of his opponent. If his opponent had been smart and built a bunker there, um, 
the Reapers wouldn't have done any damage at all. In fact, Forsaken, taking the advice I just said, building a bunker, it's only 100 minerals and you can get 75 of it back, so building a bunker is really, really good, so... Yeah, I don't know, it, the Reaper d thing doing a little bit more damage when they're in higher numbers, but still, just the fact that they're so squishy and weak makes it, I don't know, not super effective. So we have the factory coming up as well as two reactors, exactly what I was talking about. He's going to be going into very heavy marine tank. Uh, wouldn't be surprised to see an early starport and have some, uh, some some medevacs come out. We also have STEM coming up. I think it's interesting he went for combat shield first and then STEM. Uh, it's kind of the sign of, I want to play a little more defensively. Usually when you get stem first, you want to be putting on some sort of pressure and doing a little bit of aggression. Stem, of course, is good in most situations, but um, there's reasoning behind getting stem first, and there's reasoning behind getting combat shields first, and it's interesting to see what players uh, get and why. So we also have a reactor going down on this factory. Uh, I suspect the starport's going to be going down the second that Clone Bland has 100 gas. And maybe I'm mistaken. Nope, there goes the starport, and he's going to be switching that out that out and going for a more heavy marine style than than Forsaken might be. Forsaken's going to be getting up. I don't know. Forsaken's doing the same thing. I stand corrected. He's going to be getting his starport up with uh, the reactor so he can get double medevacs. It also looks like he wants to be taking a taking a third base of his own. Clone Bland not really making use of his orbital command quite yet. He's just building SCVs out of it and of course casting down mules. But his economy is going to be a little bit ahead of Forsaken just because he had that earlier and his SEV count is going to be a little bit higher. And a scan going down for Clone Bland. He sees that his opponent is essentially doing the same thing he is. Both players kind of at comparable supplies. Forsaken just ahead by one. And Forsaken now salvaging that bunker as he, you know, has a pretty good marine force. And he's going to be pushing out as he takes his third. This is so, so smart. You want to be doing an attack while taking a base. That way you kind of keep the your opponent in his base and so he's not trying to harass your third. Now one big problem is your army's going to be a little bit weaker when you take your third because uh, you're going to be putting 400 minerals into an expansion that's going to benefit you later and 400 minerals is of course a lot of marines. So I don't think Forsaken wants to be very committal here. I think he just wants to apply a lot of pressure. And he is, uh, it looks like he's going to be lifting up into the natural might be able to pick off some SEVs here. The one thing I'm worried is there's some Hellions as well as a lot of Marines, and these Marines are going to be moving forward. Stim not yet finished for Clone Bland, which is not very good, but it's going to finish here in a little bit. Oh man, Stim playing a huge role in this enga engagement as Clone Bland just lost a lot of Marines. But Clone Bland is going to have to uh, pull back just for a little bit, and Forsaken's going to have to pull back as well. Now that he has Stim finished, and some Medivacs on the field, uh, he effectively pushed that away. So I love this. Clone Bland not being super aggressive, not getting his medevacs killed. In fact, he saved... Uh, looks like he only saved one, but also saving a clump of marines. If he had just kind of run in there and thrown his army away, I think it would have been a lot less effective. And now he has his third base down. He's mining from it, where his opponent is not mining from his third base. Forsaken is looking very, very good at this time. He's got a siege tank count coming up. Uh, in fact, I think he's ahead. Yeah, uh, Clone Bland doesn't have any siege tanks at all. Uh, he's also got plus one armor and plus one attack, where his opponent's plus one armor is a little bit late. His supply is up, not by much, but a little bit. I think that the one thing Clone Bland is ahead of is workers. Yeah, we do have 59 and 58, so not even a huge advantage there. Forsaken's looking very strong at this point. Going to be moving across the map, trying to put on a little bit more pressure. I love sending a Marine to this little... Uh, this little corridor, banana corridor, I think people call it, over on the left side. So he can spot if any drops come, anything like that. It's going to be moving forward, just checking for this base here, any silly secret bases or anything like that. Plus, this is a very good spot to engage in. He can siege tanks up on this, uh, this side. Most of the time, the Terran players' siege tanks are going to be here, your Terran opponent. So, it looks like Forsaken going to be moving forward with his siege tanks. Uh, just a little bit out of range. Yeah, he's going to be sending one forward and sieging them both, and then probably sending his marines up. And this is going to be quite difficult to deal with from Clone Bland's side, uh, as he's not going to really be able to get his siege tanks in a good position. We even have him dropping his marines up onto the high ground, and I think, does he see it? Yes, he does see it. He's going to be moving forward. Oh no, with a lot of SCVs. 
huge numbers of SCVs going down. This is so, so bad for Clone Plan. Uh, some great harassment by Forsaken, and now the Terran army is moving forward, not quite in range of both siege tanks, now getting in range, uh, but a lot of Forsaken's marine army has died to this. Oh, this is not very good for Forsaken. Huge numbers of things are dying. Two siege tanks as well as a lot of marines and two or three medevacs. I actually think that almost went better for Clone Bland, with the exception of how many SCVs were killed. Uh, wrong tab. We have 15 SCVs killed, 4 Forsaken, so that's so, so good. If we look at the income tab, we can see that Forsaken is quite a bit ahead in the income. And uh, once he gets his gas geysers up, he'll be ahead there. His production facility is booming. He's got a second factory up, as well as some more barracks. He's going to be getting up his fourth command center. And yeah, looking very, very strong. The one, uh, excuse me, 2-2, two, two, just kind of starting for uh, armor for Clone Bland. Kind of the same story for Forsaken. So both of them are kind of at the same pace upgrade-wise, but I think Forsaken is going to kind of push ahead economically once his fourth base gets up. And now we have the aggression coming from Clone Bland. He has a ton of medevacs, as well as a you know a good bit of siege tanks. But thanks to that two-factory siege tank production, Forsaken's siege tank count has replenished largely. He has four right now, actually a fifth just finishing, and a good bit of marines. So these marines are going to be moving forward, but the siege tanks are sieged. A large number of hits are going to be going down on this marine force, and I don't like this attack by Clone Bland. His army is very, very clumped up, and everything just dying. The siege tanks are going to go down to these marines, and uh, by the marines of Forsaken. In fact, one more just coming in and sieging, but a little bit too late as Forsaken takes it down, killing all the marines, and now he's going to be able to pick off three, maybe four medevacs. Will he get the fourth? Yes, the fourth and the fifth goes down. Oh, that is a huge blunder from Clone Bland. Forsaken just pulling his army supply ahead, 160, excuse me, to 125 of Clone Bland. Forsaken's looking great, getting his plus one attack for his uh, for his siege tanks, plus one attack for his marines has finished, and I suspect he'll be starting plus three attack here pretty soon. He's moving his fourth base over where he'll be mining uh, a lot more than his opponent. And everything's just looking great for Forsaken. His medevac count has gotten back up. He kind of depleted clone blands. He's going to be moving over to the left. I love this. If you if you remember, his first attack was over here on the left. His second attack was over here on the right. And now his third attack is over here on the left once again. So kind of switching back and forth, which is very, very smart. Uh, clone Bland doesn't really know what to suspect. But the one thing I don't like is his army is going to be very clumped up. One siege tank going down, he's going to be pulling back. Oh, these marines so clumped together. The siege tank's taking huge hits, or giving huge hits onto the marines. Yeah, that was... That actually worked out very, very well for Forsaken. Was able to do a lot of damage, but I kind of think he should pull back right now. Um, the siege tank right here is going to be able to effectively shut down a lot of the marine forces coming forward. The marines stemming forward and moving into the siege tank line. He's going to be able to kill one. Uh, actually, all four of these siege tanks look like they might go down. Yes, indeed, he is going to get all four of them. So, yeah, that kind of working out for Clone Bland. The siege tank is going to is going to die, but. I think that Forsaken lost a lot there, a lot more than he should have. I think when he did all the damage to the Marines, he should have unseized and kind of pulled back. Um, as the unit lost tab, whoa, actually hugely in Forsaken's favor. So I take that back. Even though Forsaken's losing a lot, I think he's trading very, very efficiently. He's getting uh, actually one blunder from Forsaken. He's not getting plus three where Clone Bland is getting his plus three. But his production is crazy good. He's getting up two more command centers as well as an, uh, a planetary fortress. This base is going to be very, very protected. He's continuing to add on factories. He's going to be producing tanks three at a time. And he's continuing to produce marines and reactors so they can just continually get his marine army up. So even though these trades have been... Um, they've been a little bit scary, been a little bit worried for Forsaken. I think they've been overall very, very effective. And so, Forsaken's going to be moving forward. Once again, a lot of SCVs moving towards this fourth that Forsaken can kill, and it looks like he will kill. Oh, this is so, so bad for Clone Bland. I don't know how much he's going to lose. Actually, a lot of the SCVs will run away. But the orbital getting dangerously low, and now we have another engagement. But this is so bad for Clone Bland. The siege tanks of Forsaken are killing a lot of the Marines. Uh, but at the same time, the siege tanks of Clone Bland killing a lot of Forsaken's Marines, but not enough. It looks like Forsaken taking this engagement handily going to be moving forward killing a lot of uh, supply depots. not going to be supply blocking his opponent as the supply of Clone Bland has dropped quite heavily. And 
clone blam trying to decide what to do. He's going to be stemming forward. I don't know if this is the best decision. Siege Tank's going to be doing some huge hits to clone blam's marines. And with this high medevac count, Forsaken just can continue to stem and crush the army of clone blam. No siege tanks on the map for clone blam. This is so bad. He's going to be stemming forward once again, trying to pick off these siege tanks. But the siege tanks doing more than enough damage, forcing the clone blam back once again. And this factory looks like it's going to go down, which is tragic because uh, Clone Band really needs to catch up in the Siege Tank count. I think he only has two factories to the three of Forsaken, and now is his opportunity as these Siege Tanks were on Siege, but looks like it's going to be a little bit too late. Moving forward, huge hits on the Marines. They are all going to go down. He might actually just barely clean this up. Yes, he is Clone Band surviving, but at what cost? He lost his fourth. Forsaken's fourth is looking great. He has five orbital commands, I believe. He's putting down a ton of barracks. He's going to be taking up his fifth base. And now he's going to be moving up and attacking this left side. Once again, attack from the left, attack from the right. Attack from the left, attack from the right. Just whittling down Clone Bland's army and keeping him questioning where is Forsaken going to attack next. So a lot of siege tanks sieging. There's only one siege tank for Clone Bland doing hits to these marines. He will be able to kill this siege tank, no problem. And imagine he's going to be lifting up with his medevacs and putting it into the natural. And I don't know what else Clone Blame can do with only one siege tank left. Uh, it's it's looking very, very bleak for him. I think this natural is definitely going to fall. And with this natural, the game, so many siege tanks for Forsaken. He's going to be moving forward and sieging once again. Clone Blame, oh, being very, very indecisive here. Not really knowing what to do. Marines moving forward, but it looks like the Marines of Forsaken are just a little bit too big in numbers and a little bit too strong. Everything dying for Clone Plan, and I think this is pretty much it. He lost a lot of uh, a lot of barracks there. I'd like to see some of these siege tanks be lifted up into the natural. Marines moving forward, killing off these refineries. Oh, huge hits on Clone Plan's Marines by Forsaken siege tanks. Yeah, I mean, look at the production. Two more factories on the way. Uh, gonna be getting tech labs on those pretty shortly, I believe. And there's just no way Clone Blank can compete with this. It's gonna be moving forward, moving back. Yeah, there's not much that can happen here. Some scans going down just to see where the army is. I love this. Sending some Marines over here, preventing this command center from landing. And Clone Blaine can't really afford to deal with that. Manor Mule's dropping everywhere for Forsaken, not really doing anything. Just kind of rubbing it into his opponent's face. And he's going to be stemming forward and killing this Siege Tank off so, so quickly. And, yeah, that's definitely a Clone Blaine gg there. Forsaken playing an excellent game, just slowly whittling away his opponent's forces and preventing him from taking any more bases. That's kind of the best thing to do. And, yeah. So, very exciting TVT. I loved casting it. It's definitely a challenge because both players have Marines, both players have tanks, so I kind of have to specify whose Marines and whose tanks are attacking whose Marines and whose tanks. So, I like that. feels like it uh, helps me improve my casting style. But on top of that, I, I can't fix all my own problems without knowing what they are. So, if you have any criticisms for me, I would love to hear that in the comments. If you like the video, I'd love to hear that in the comments. Reading comments is my favorite thing to do. And I love replying to them as well. I try to reply to each and every one if I can. So please comment. Also like the video if you enjoyed it. Share it with your friends. These sort of things. And finally, most importantly, subscribe to the channel and check out our official website. All those links will be posted below. And it would mean a lot to us here at Non Esports. Once again, I'll be gone this weekend. But I will be back next week, hopefully casting a little bit of Clan War action. So I'll see you then.